Today on Variant, I give you the alternate versions of this guy, Reverse Flash. <laughs> Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than Flash wishes he could save his mother without screwing up the timeline. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. It's been quite a while since I've done an alternate versions episode, so today, I wanted to fix that. Getting back to the darker side of comics, I wanted to do an alternate versions episode on one of my favorite villains, Reverse Flash. And just so you all know, there isn't a crap ton of alternate versions of the character like there is for the Flash, Joker, or Batman, but there is some pretty cool ones, so let's talk about them. As I do with every alternate versions episode, let's kick things off by talking about the most prominent and main version of the character, which is the DC Universe proper Reverse Flash, aka Professor Zoom, aka Eobard Thon. Yes, I know, that's a lot of AKAs. Thon is the true arch enemy of Barry Allen and first appeared in Flash 139 in 1963. Thon was a scientist born in the 25th century and he was a brilliant scientist at that. He also idolized Barry Allen Flash as in the 25th century he was a legend. Being obsessed with the Flash, he decided to travel back in time to meet him by replicating the accident that gave Barry Allen his powers. However, after going back in time, he learned that his destiny was to become Barry's arch enemy, the Reverse Flash. Oh, time travel, how awesome, yet super complex and confusing you can be sometimes. Anyway, once Don learned it was his destiny to become the Reverse Flash, he became extremely unstable. Long story short, he becomes the Reverse Flash and comes to hate Barry Allen, to the point that he wants to kill him. The problem is, he can't because if Barry Allen never becomes the Flash, he can never become Reverse Flash. There's a lot more to it, but again, time travel and how it works is super confusing. I break it all down in much greater detail though in our History of Reverse Flash and Flashpoint episodes. So make sure you check those out if you want a more in-depth explanation. Anyway, since he can't kill Barry, Thon does what he thinks is the next best thing and kills Barry Allen's mother, hence the whole arch enemy thing. Now, even if you don't read Flash comics, you knew that Thon killed Barry Allen's mother already because you most likely watched the Flash TV show. If you don't watch the TV show, what the heck is wrong with you? Watch the first two seasons on Netflix and then watch season three on the CW app. There's also the New 52 version of Professor Zoom, AKA Eobard Thon. He looks pretty similar to the pre-New 52 Thon, minus a few changes, like the diamond lightning bolt symbol on his chest and the black lightning patterns on his costume. In the New 52, Thon is also from the future and travels back in time to fight Barry, saying that the reason his society won't accept his oppressive rule is because of their love for the Flash. Which, I mean, would you blame them? If you had an awesome Flash running around, who would want to accept the reverse? You see what I did there? Anyway, let's move on to another version of Reverse Flash, and that would be Hunter Zolomon. Now again, most people know Zoom from the Flash TV show, but in the comics, he's very different. He's a former FBI agent who became paralyzed after a run-in with Gorilla Grodd. At that time, Wally West was the current Flash, and being a friend of Wally's, he asked Wally if he could travel back in time using the cosmic treadmill to prevent him from ever becoming paralyzed. But Wally was all like, I can't, because I could disrupt the time stream in the process, screwing up all sorts of stuff. Needless to say, Zolomon was pissed about this and said something to the effect of, you just don't know what it's like to feel personal tragedy. That's why you won't do it. Zolomon eventually broke into the Flash Museum to use the cosmic treadmill himself, but of course it didn't work, and the resulting explosion destroyed the Flash Museum. However, as you might have guessed, the explosion actually ends up giving Zolomon his powers, knocking his connection to time out of sync. Because of this, he is able to slow down time, thus giving him the illusion of super speed. As fate would have it though, he eventually lost his powers and would lose the use of his legs once again. Now this next version of Reverse Flash is extremely weird. In an alternate timeline which was created by Impulse, Professor Zoom was the national science advisor for the president. Even though this version of Professor Zoom was said to have vast intelligence, all the advice he would give the president was like, no duh, common sense. As the timeline continued to change Zoom, he joined the rebellion led by Gorilla Grodd. And this is where it gets really weird, people. Zoom gets turned into a gorilla who fights against an army of turtles led by Grodd, who, by the way, is also now a turtle. I told you this was a weird one, and I wasn't lying. Moving along, you guys all know the villain Abracadabra, right? He's most recently being used as the villain for the Titans DC Rebirth storyline. But back in the day, Abracadabra pretended to be Reverse Flash for a period of time. He did this as a way to lure Flash to the 64th century in order to win a wager he had with the High Commissioner of that era. The next Reverse Flash is another character you might be familiar with because of the Flash TV series, and that is Rival. Again, he's very different in the TV show than he is in the comics. He's the enemy of the very first Flash, Jake Garrick. Now even though he's called Rival, he's considered to be the Golden Age Reverse Flash. His real name is Dr. Edward Claris. He was the professor at the same university that Jay Garrick attended. Claris thought he had recreated the formula that gave Jay Garrick his speed, which he named Velocity 9. 
But being pissed at the scientific community for the rejection of his formula, he became a criminal and just wears a darker version of Jay Garrick's costume. Which isn't very original, but I guess it's effective. Sometime later, he realized that his formula was only temporary, and he was brought to justice. He did eventually come back though, because well, comic books. Keeping the reverse flash train rolling, we have E.R. Barthon of Earth 508. This is the Earth of the DC Super Friends, which is a comic aimed for younger kids, and is based off the DC Super Friends toy line by Fisher Price, which explains why they're all cute and kid-like. The next reverse flash is Thaddeus Thon II, and his villain name is Inertia. But since he's the evil clone of Bar Allen, aka Impulse, he's considered to be his reverse flash. Inertia is a super intelligent sociopath who uses steroids to make himself faster. He then tried to use the rogues to drain Barry Allen's powers for himself. Evil speedsters, man, they're always trying to steal other speedsters' speed. Speedsters' speed. Speedsters' speed. That's fun to say. Inertia's plan backfired when Wally West showed up, but since Bart was already drained of the speed force, the rogues who Inertia manipulated to fight Impulse accidentally beat Bart to death. Inertia then tried to escape, but Wally was like, nope, and drained Inertia of his speed. Wally drained so much speed from him, in fact, that he was unable to move and essentially became a living statue. Wally then put Inertia in the Flash Museum, facing him towards all the tributes that Impulse had done. He was basically forced to look at the man he could never become. And this brings me to the last reverse Flash from the comics that I I'm gonna talk about, and that is Daniel West from DC's New 52. Right off the bat, you may be saying, Daniel West, does that mean he's related to Iris West? And yes, yes he is. He's our younger brother. Daniel was once a small time crook who was caught and taken in by the Flash when they were both starting out. Several years later, Daniel was released on parole and got his powers in a freak accident like most heroes or villains. What had happened was, is while Daniel was running away from the rogues, he crashed into a stolen monorail car that just so happened to be powered by a Speed Force battery. The crash imbued powers into West, giving him the power to turn back time. What's really interesting about this reverse flash, at least I think, is his costume. He basically wears armor that he can control, and the armor is made from shrapnel from the monorail that was destroyed in the crash that gave him his powers. But just like that, my friends, you have the alternate versions of reverse flash. Again, there isn't a crap ton of them, but I did my best to give you guys a solid list. Also, let me know in the comment section what character you'd like to see for the next alternate versions episode, because I just might do the one you recommend next. Did you know Daredevil didn't always treat the ladies like a gentleman, like any true superhero or just a normal man should? He could actually be accused of sexual harassment in the panel I'm about to show you. In a panel in Daredevil issue 120, Daredevil smacks Black Widow's butt while saying, and I quote, so why don't you slip into something barely legal? I want my date to be the most gorgeous thing at the party. To which Black Widow replies, you male chauvinist, ow. And Daredevil finally says, I said move it, darling. All I can say is if a guy did and said that to any self-respecting woman and was being serious, I would hope that that dude would get a hardcore slap right across the face. Also, this panel would never get past editorial today. It just shows how different the world worked back then. First up for Wednesday, October 19th, we have Death of X issue two. What happened eight months ago that set the Inhumans and the X-Men on a collision course? We find out in this issue. Here we have Trinity issue two. If you're looking for a comic that arguably has the three most important heroes in the entire DC universe, then look no further. And finally, we have Batman issue nine. In order to retrieve Psycho Pirate and save Gotham Girl, Batman must recruit a team from Amanda Waller to break into the most impenetrable prison in the world and steal from one of the Dark Knight's greatest enemies, Bane. And just like that, that brings another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or this face on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see your lovely faces next week when I talk about all things comics. What's your question? <laughs> He's the enemy of the very first reverse flash. The very first flash. Jay Garrick. You might be familiar with because of the Flash TV series. And that character is Rival. <laughs> because of the Flash TV series. And that is Rival, who's the villain for season three.